Heat TV presents Homework Hotline, the after school show that fuses learning with fun. Watch local teachers bring the classroom on air and online. This is Homework Hotline. Hello, I'm Beth Baker and I work at McKinleyville Middle School in McKinleyville. And I'm Jody Hamango. I also work at McKinleyville Middle School. I teach 7th grade science and this year I'm actually teaching digital journalism as well. Oh, all kinds of exciting stuff, huh? Super exciting. Yes. And middle schoolers at McKinleyville are lovely. They are interested in everything. So um, typically the way the show goes is either the science teacher leads it and the math teacher tries to keep up or vice versa in today's science day. So Ms. Hamango, what have you got for us today? Well, in seventh grade right now, and hopefully some of my seventh graders are watching, I told them about the time Hi, and seventh channel graders. and how they can uh, check in here. Uh -huh. So we're studying characteristics of living things mm -hmm. and one of the characteristics of living things is all living things have DNA. Okay. DNA is pretty hard to see. If it's in chromosomes you can see it if it's stained under the microscope. Okay. And there's a very very cool and simple way to extract DNA either in the classroom or at home. Okay. Got it. From all kinds of things. You could try different vegetables, different fruits. I've extracted DNA from split peas at the high school. I think they extract DNA from animal parts. Uh huh. I won't get into too much detail because it's a little <laughs> on the gross side and I think they yeah. use a blender. Uh huh. We're just going to use our hands today. Okay. Got That's it. That's a good stress reducer. Okay. Oh good. Are we going to use our hands to mash up some strawberries? We are. Oh good. I'm all in. So for science and for mushing up strawberries in our hands. I yeah. like it. And I had to go through a lot of strawberries to do this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So to try it at home and everything. Yeah. And here's the model DNA that I found in the studio. So it's oh. a double helix. We won't see anything like that. What we're going to extract is something that's probably not incredibly pure. There's probably a little bit of protein in it. Uh -huh. And what we're going to look for, it's kind of white ish clear gooey phlegmy is how I would describe huh. it. Okay. And it's in those strawberries? It's in the strawberries, and wow. strawberries have eight copies of their genome in every cell. So that's why they're a great candidate for this. Uh huh. Because okay. they just so have if an excess. We take a look at these little guys. So there's, so they have like extra blueprints. And in and that. humans have two copies, so they have eight. Uh -huh. Okay, got it. Ooh, that's a beautiful one right there. Yeah. Got it. And maybe then, we'll eat some while we go. Uh huh. Got it. And then um, seventh graders might understand a little bit about DNA, but we, should we just say that DNA is kind of the li little tiny uh, molecular little map inside your cells that makes you who you are and what you are. Right. So, so it's it. the blueprint to build whatever living thing we are looking at. Every living thing has it. And it tells our bodies how to make proteins. So it's, instru it's a cookbook for making proteins. Okay. Um, and, you know, lots of Nobel Prize winners w around DNA. Like you okay. and I both read a book about that. Yes, we DNA did. telomerase. Yes. Which repairs our DNA. So our DNA is super important for growing, developing, aging. Uh-huh. Um, and that's why like a strawberry plant only makes strawberries. It would never accidentally make a grape, right? Because the strawberry plant's DNA tells it to make strawberries. So that's like how plants know how to do what they do. Right. And we yeah. share a lot of our DNA with other living things. Uh huh. So I think it's like 40% of our DNA is exactly the same as a banana. Oh, wow. Right. Okay. And we're like 98.7, I think it is, similar to a chimpanzee. Which is funny because in a middle school, if you hear the play vocalizations, it kind of sounds like primates out there playing. I've so humans wanted... can make some of the same noises when they're playing that other primates do when they're playing. Right. And I've always yes. wanted to work at a zoo. So <laughs> that, I'm going to reach over you and grab the clicker okay. so we can move on to our set of instructions oh, okay. here. Got it. I will, um, I will back out of the way so we can see what we're doing. So we have a pretty long list of materials. Uh huh. And then and is this list available on the uh, Keat website also? I it think it certainly can be. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I try to use really common household things rather uh -huh. than any kind of specialty tools so right. that people could feel that this would be something that would be easy to pull off at home. Uh -huh. For dishwashing soap, 
I like the blue stuff. Uh huh. Which is used in a lot of science labs for a lot of different science applications okay. because it's so incredibly good at cutting fat. Okay. And we're going to use it for that today. Um, so you need three to five strawberries, not the whole container, but I thought uh -huh. we might want to munch on some. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we need a measuring cup for our liquids, although we can actually eyeball our cup of ice cold isopropyl alcohol. So the rubbing alcohol actually needs to be uh -huh. ice cold. So okay. that's been in the freezer uh -huh. for us and on the hottest, one of the hottest days we've had. It's certainly been warm today. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was in my car. So uh -huh. <laughs> we needed to yeah. cool it way down. Cheesecloth for some straining, measure, measuring cups, a variety of glasses to hold all our items, funnel, plastic bag, that's what we're going to mush around in, and uh -huh. then a bamboo bamboo skewer and if you didn't have a bamboo skewer you could definitely use a toothpick okay and a fly is joining us on set okay <laughs> okay so to start out i loaded you up already with okay. some water okay so here i have half cup of water that's actually a third a cup oh yep okay i agree and then you're going to add a half teaspoon of salt so we're okay. actually doing chemistry uh-huh some really simple chemistry okay. to extract and I can assist here. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, we're actually using chemistry to extract the DNA. Okay. So the job of the salt is to help all of our DNA clump together so it's visible. Okay. DNA is a long, fragile strand. Uh huh. So, and you know what? You don't have to worry too. That's a beautiful technique. <laughs> We're going to mash it all together. Oh, so I'm being far too careful. Okay, so there's a half a teaspoon no such of... thing in science. <laughs> half a teaspoon of salt and a third of a cup of water. Right. Okay. And then we're going to use this soap, which Bloom I soap. buy in large quantities because it's good for all kinds of things. Uh-huh. Science applicated. I think science is, scientists use it also to unclean birds that have been in oil spills, I think is what Absolutely. they use also. Okay, and, and one then of how the much of this? You're going to do one tablespoon. Okay. One of the reasons I always have it on hand is it's part of a very good de-skunking recipe, which I was thinking maybe I should oh, do next month. Oh, because you have dogs, huh? Yes, and skunks. Oh, yes. Whoop. Okay, well. That's why I put the butcher paper down. Okay, because you saw me coming. Well, and okay. I did this myself and realized yes. it's quite messy. I did not get it in the keyboard, so that's the good news. Should I um, swoosh it around to get the stuff stuck in the bowl sure. into the water? Yeah, okay. I do that to make sure that we yeah. get the whole. By the way, for those of you who like to cook, when you're doing a recipe, if there's a lowercase t, it means teaspoon. And if there's a capital T, it means tablespoon. And if you're putting baking soda in a recipe and it says a teaspoon and you put in a tablespoon, you probably won't be able to eat what you make. Or salt. And I have made that mistake myself as a young cook or as a young baker, if you will. So little t, teaspoon, capital T, tablespoon. So be careful on your recipes so you don't put in too much salt or too much baking soda or those kinds of ingredients. Right. And I think in this recipe, yes. I used the longer abbreviation. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. So you actually spelled out teaspoon. Right. right. And tablespoon. Yep. OK. What so, do we do next? OK, so the next step, which we're mm -hmm. actually just going to set aside, so we're going to kind of prep. Uh -huh. The very next step is to line the funnel with cheesecloth. I pre-cut it for you. Oh, wow. Look at that. OK. And cheesecloth, I think I bought this at the hardware store. OK. Uh-huh. Um, and it comes in handy for all kinds of things. Great. And then, uh, do, oh, there's the funnel right in front of me. So, so we are currently on step two right now. So I have lined it like that. I just kind of poked it down. Yeah. OK. And then we're going to set the funnel with the cheesecloth into this empty mason jar. And is it going to fit? Oh, perfectly. Look at that. Very satisfying the way that fits. We'll I, show you guys in just a minute. Okay. I so, completely uh -huh. agree. So here's step two, which is that we have the so cheesecloth. I'll show you guys. So cheesecloth is like the super open weave fabric where um, moisture can go through, but it holds the solids. So right. it helps to. And then we're going to put it through this funnel. So you use for the lots funnel. of straining things. Yes. And I think if you didn't have cheesecloth, you could probably, if you had it, uh, one of those mesh strainers uh -huh. or... Um, what about if you had an old beat up sock, like a thin sock, I maybe? Th yeah, or like pantyhose would probably work oh, or yeah. tights. Pantyhose, uh -huh. nobody wears pantyhose anymore, do they? No. Uh -uh. I don't Back in the day, people wore these things called pantyhose <laughs> and they're great for science projects. Yeah, or tights. Right. Yeah. Okay, so, so there's not that. very comfortable though. Yeah. And then we're going to start our mashing of the strawberries. Okay, good. 
So we're going for three to five strawberries. Okay. And we're going to put them into a bag. Uh huh. And this is a reused plastic bag. Yay. Recycle everything. So especially since you're wearing some white, I oh, wore yeah. strawberry colored. So uh -huh. <laughs> if I got messy, I'm it'd just going to okay. risk it. <laughs> we're going to remove the green top. So we really just want the fruit part. Oh, okay. Got it. And then we're going to put them in here. Uh huh. We're going to add. And then does the green part have DNA in it? The green part would have DNA in it uh -huh. because the leaves, of course, are also made of cells. Uh huh. So and. Most uh, most cells have DNA in it, like in the hu in human body, our red blood cells don't. Uh huh. But most cells do have DNA. But we're gonna okay. remove that. Uh huh. And just remove the top. You could pull it off with your fingers. We're gonna okay. put it in the bag. Okay. Here we go. Let's use my thumbnail. I'll just kind of gouge it out of there. Yeah. At home, I cut off oh. the tops. Or you yes. could also scoop them out with this if you wanted oh, it to yeah. be really. Okay. So we're gonna put them in this bag. I'm gonna move things around a little bit so you can see what we're doing. Okay, There's and then two. I always feel compelled to like really look at the strawberries and then pick the one that really is like making eye contact with me. Right. It's like, oh, I you're do the I'm strawberry. Eating. Yes. I know it's making me a little sad that these particular strawberries are not for consumption. Right. Yes. And this is not something you'd want to eat. Just And eating. I'm going to check the directions again. Let's see. It says, um, remove the green tops from strawberries, put strawberries in plastic bag and push out the extra air, close the bag tightly. And then, and did you say just like three to four strawberries-ish? Yeah, three to five-ish. Okay. So we're probably good. We've got four and they're on the bigger side. Three would uh -huh. absolutely work. Okay. So then squeeze out the air. This is the fun part. I brought an okay. extra bag in case I wanted to help. Okay. So I'm just going to like smush it? Yeah, and tell me if the bag starts to leak. I know, I'm a little <laughs> worried about that. Okay, so I'm going to leave a little bit of room up here. And yeah. now I'm just going to go like smush, smush, smush. Oh, you know what? It, that they're is, gushing. That's like really nice if you've had a stressful long day. And if you can just like wash the strawberries. And you do want to like definitely cutting. try to get out any big chunks. Okay. This is when I'm making banana bread. This is how I smush the bananas. I put them in a baggie and then I smush them and it's just so satisfying. And it's, I, you can't smell it through the TV, but it smells good. And it's making a skloosh, skloosh noise too, which is kind of entertaining. Okay, so here we go. They're really really smushed. Okay. Oh yeah. And you can hear them going squish, squish, squish. Okay. So this used to be four beautiful strawberries and now it's a big gloopy mess in the bag. Right. Now we're basically okay. making strawberry juice. We are. Okay. So they're all squishy, squishied. Okay. And okay. I have some jokes for you. Oh, okay. While you, while you squish. Okay. I'm going to just make sure I get F every last little bit out. Okay. Give me a joke. Okay. Why was the, this is a current Joke, I believe. Okay. Okay. We'll <laughs> Based see. on my judgment. Uh huh. Why was the biologist a great mother? Why was the biologist a great mother? I don't know. She had mom jeans. Mom jeans. <laughs> ha. Okay. Which a lot of people are wearing these days. Heck yeah. I love those mom jeans. <laughs> okay. What so, else do you got for me? Biologists, ha did you know that uh -huh. biologists have discovered that legs are hereditary? Legs are hereditary. Okay, I think I know where this is going, but hit me. Okay, how oh, come? Give it a shot, Miss Baker. Oh, because they run in the family? How did I do? They run in the genes. Oh, they <laughs> run in the genes. I was close. I got halfway there. No, I think yeah. that you did, you did well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. All right. So, next step. Uh-huh. You're going to add some extraction fluid and three tablespoons. Do you think our bag can sustain three tablespoons? Ooh, it's going to be close. It's going to be close. I do yeah. have a bigger bag. And can I use like all the mushy goop or just does it have to be like watery? We're using all that goop. Okay, oh, all the mushy goop. Oh, you're putting the extraction goop. fluid into the bag. Because that's is we're going to Is this the extraction fluid? It, that this. is. Oh, right. I got it. Oh, I just made up in my own mind that the gushed up strawberry was that. Okay. Yeah. So the Here extraction liquid is what we're going to use to extract. And the that's the salt DNA. and soap and water combo. And the soap, the role of the soap for the strawberries is to break down the phospholipid bilayer that surrounds the cells. Okay. So, so this is lipid gonna, meaning fat. So here's one tablespoon. And that's why you want the blue stuff because it's so good at breaking down the fats. Okay. Two tablespoons. Very good. And three tablespoons. Oop, I better open the bag a little better. Oh, it's a good thing you put that butcher paper down. You knew what was coming, huh? Yeah. Luckily, okay, so now if you we make have a mess with this, it smells good and it's soap and berries and salt, so and water. Oh, 
So it's like just a great cleaning solution. Okay, so now I have the soap and salt and water mixture in with all the goopy strawberries. Okay, and if you wanted to get crazy at home, like mm -hmm. not too crazy, you could put a pinch of meat tenderizer in there. Oh, okay. And that helps break down the proteins as well. Uh-huh. You don't have to. Also, I wanted to mention, if you wanted to do this at home, you can actually collect your own DNA. Oh, like cheek cells or? Well, you, yes. Uh -huh. But to get your cheek cells out, you spit into a small cup. <laughs> so you would spit into a Ick. jar like this, I know, until you have, you know, it might take you a while. Because you want, like, that's why we're not doing that one. And also in pandemic times, like, spit is making me super creeped out, even more than usual, I will say. Right. So yes. only do that at home with beloved family members. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So your next step is to remash the bag. Oh, okay. So kind of repeat what you already did. Okay. So we're going to go squishy, squishy, squishy. And now I'm just getting all the gushed up strawberry mixed in with the water and the soap and the salt. It's no longer yummy to eat. No. Okay, we've ruined it. We have. Well, we have made it fit for science, I guess, huh? Okay, so now everything's all mixed in together. Squishy, squishy. And so by stirring it up now, you want to expose as many of the strawberry cells as you can to the extraction. So you want it to come into contact with the salt so that the DNA and the proteins kind of clump together. Okay. The soap, again, is breaking down the phospholipid bilayer that surrounds the cells. Uh-huh. Could you do this in a blender? Or would that be too vigorous? You could totally do this in a blender. Okay. When I've made large quantities uh -huh. for my class, I've done it in a blender. Okay, and we got used, it. And we use split peas. Uh-huh. Mostly because I, I personally don't think you should eat them. Oh. <laughs> and it's hard to destroy a lot of strawberries for a class yes. project. And also, there are a few seventh graders that will just try to a nibble of everything, and split peas might be less attractive yeah. to people who will nibble, will try a nibble of anything. A beautiful green color, but you know, yeah. if you're not a fan of like split pea soup, it's less appealing. Yeah. And this smells really good. It does smell amazing. So okay. once you're satisfied. Okay, I think I've got it pretty good. We're going to pour it over the cheesecloth. Oh, so now it goes in here? Yep. Ah. And so we're going to strain it. Okay. So we're, and any chunks that didn't get totally broken down? I know there's some chunks in there. I can feel them through the plastic. So when I did this at home, somehow my <laughs> bag busted. Oh. So it's like a rigorous <laughs> stir. I was waiting to see if I was going to make it overflow, but it seems to be fitting. I thought that maybe I would overfill the funnel. Yeah, I stra shot strawberries across the <laughs> kitchen. Did your did your pets think that you were absolutely crazy? Like, um, what is she doing now? I think they thought they it was typical. <laughs> I don't think they thought it was typical kitchen behavior. <laughs> when I yell "uh oh," the dogs come running. Oh yeah, because they're like, "hmm, there must be treats." There we go. Yeah. Okay, so we'll kind of jiggle it. Oh, I almost lost the edge there. Okay, try and keep it in the middle. I was very economical with the cheesecloth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see, like, if you had a sock or something, you could just, like, put it all in there and squeeze yeah, it. Yeah, actually, probably almost any loose weave fabric would work. Yeah. Okay, and then like I'm just going to Like a rag, kinda... like part of an old T-shirt yeah. or would be great. When I was a kid, we had dairy goats, and it was my chore in the morning to get up and milk the goats. And this kind of feels like that, where you um, hold the top secure and then put pressure on the bottom to get the liquid to come out the bottom. No wonder why she's so good at it. I, that was my favorite chore, except for, except for there was one goat. I can't remember her name, Nanny. And Nanny kicked. And so she would kick at the, at, at the person and the, so she'd eat her grain and she'd kick the milk bucket over and she'd kick your arm. Nanny was not a nice goat. Nanny. But the others were nice, Cleopatra and Nanda. Super nice goats. Anyway, this is a little bit like that. Okay, and how, how do we feel about how much fluid we have here right now? Um, I, we're feeling good about that amount of fluid. Okay, I can get a little bit more. So oh. that's actually outstanding technique. And, and I brought I have, paper towels. Oh, I was going to say, at this exact moment, I have zero plan for getting clean again. Thank goodness you think these things through. I had a plan. <laughs> I had no plan. <laughs> well, she doesn't always know fully what she's going to do when she shows up. No, and I love that part of this show, which is the science teacher just leads me through some amazing discovery, and I just get to really enjoy it. So I love this. Right. So we come in totally cold, <laughs> which okay. is super fun. Oh, yeah. There's no rehearsal on this show whatsoever. <laughs> All right. So okay. 
We're looking, I think we're looking great. Okay, good. And can I just kind of go over the, I just want to look at our procedure again. So we're on procedure six, pour the strawberry mixture from the bag into the funnel and let it drip until there's very little liquid left. So Mission that's this. accomplished. So now we have this soapy strawberry without the tissue-y stuff in it. Before right? you spun the cup, I should have said, let's minimize the bubbles. Oh no! <laughs> okay, I will stop spinning the cup. That, okay. I, that'll, that'll work though. Uh huh. Okay. So the next step is actually to use, so ice cold rubbing alcohol is key. So, and you could follow this exact same step if you were doing your saliva. So I had this, I put this in the freezer when I got here and had it on ice all day. Okay. And my procedure, I wrote it as a half cup and I realized as I practiced the procedure that actually you don't really need that much. Okay, got it. So as you go, if you're a scientist, you might modify your steps and uh -huh. your process yep. based on what you see. Okay. And really, if I was being super accurate, I would have changed it up there. But okay. just so you know, you probably don't need a half cup. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to transfer this into the smaller container. And we are going to shoot for about a quarter full. Okay. And do you think I need the funnel or should I just pour it? Um, I trust you. Okay. Here we go. I think you're good at pouring stuff. And you're ready to contain any messes. Yes. So roughly a quarter. I'm thinking right about there. What is that? How does that look to you? I think that looks great. Okay. It's a little bubbly. Are we worried about the bubbles? Not in particular. Okay. It, Since um, there's not a lot we can do about the bubbles now. <laughs> unless we just wait. Yeah. I do have another joke. That makes for super dynamic um, a show. <laughs> you know, we're just going to wait for the bubbles to no, go away. No, I'm all oh. prepared with jokes. You have another joke. Okay, yeah. here we go. What did one DNA strand say to the other DNA strand? Ooh, I have no idea. What did it say? Do I look good in these jeans? Oh, <laughs> love it. <sighs> okay, I asked my students for jokes and they had nothing today. Oh, okay. They a were, lot of times they, kids donate one or two really great jokes. And I they weren't say. prepared. Yeah. I didn't yeah. give them forewarning. Yeah. Okay, let's see here. I think we got to watch the clock, so we okay. got to get ourselves going here. So with the isopropyl rubbing alcohol, ice cold, I don't know if you can see the condensation. Okay, super cold. You're going to pour it down. We don't really want it to mix. Okay. We want it to stack on top of mm. our strawberry extraction. Oh, okay. Got it. So I would recommend pouring it like really gently down the side. Okay. And the rubbing alcohol is going to cause the DNA to precipitate out of solution. So what we're going to see, if all goes smoothly, yes, is we're going to see a layer above the strawberries. of, well, we're going to see a clear layer. We're going to see the strawberry layer. I think it's doing that. And then in between, we're going to see it's precipitate, and that always makes me think mostly of snow. I don't know why. Oh, precipitation. Yeah. So we're going to see like a white kind of cloudy layer. Okay. How do we feel about that? That looks good. Okay. So I'm going to hold oh, it Oh, it really did float to, on top. Look at that. So it really floated. Wow. On top. Oh. And then I don't know if the camera can pick it up. I'll try to stay it up really still. Well. well, do you see the layers? They almost look like stalactites hold tight to the ceiling. They look like stalagmites. So the it does, so you can see sort of white, cloudy yeah, bubbles there, coming I think up down in here. So it's, it. so it's straight pink and then white, cloudy things lifting up from the bottom, and then you can just see the top surface. So that white, cloudy layer. Uh -huh. Is our DNA. Wow, that Not is our so DNA. cool. Strawberry well, DNA. Strawberry DNA. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. And you can see it's just floating there so clearly. And it's actually just moving up. Mine didn't turn out this beautifully at home. Oh, that is amazing. So that Super. is strawberry DNA. So now if you were a mad scientist and you knew what to do with this DNA, could you use this as the recipe to create brand new strawberries? Like the Jurassic Park idea of like we had DNA and we built dinosaurs? I suppose I could. <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving things over into fantasy, but what we have here and is a scientist. So, by the yeah. way, that's way above my pay grade and equipment. We're not building any dinosaurs this week. Sorry. Not only that, but if yeah. you can buy it at the grocery store, I can turn it into something, but yeah. I don't have any yeah. fancy equipment. In so seventh now grade, it's hard up against the top surface. So like right under the meniscus of the fluid, the rubbing alcohol is now this sort of mucusy layer. Okay, so we have our mucusy layer. Uh -huh. And just for fun That's and because amazing. we're kind of playing around, uh -huh. 
I'm going to have you use the bamboo skewer. Okay. Which, again, this is something you can get at the grocery store. I think uh -huh. a toothpick would work. Yeah. In a pinch, you could use a fork. Uh huh. You're going to try to pick it up. Like swirl, like cotton candy, kind of? Yeah, yes. So we're going to see if she can get, oh, that's pretty good. Ooh, so you can it's kind of like gross and slimy. It's you guys like see it? very phlegmy. Yeah, right there with my shirt behind it so you can see. So that phlegmy stuff is the actual DNA from the strawberries. And we're looking huh. at many, 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 many strands from many, many, many thousands, if not millions of cells. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. So, wow, and that's I amazing think though. It kind of looks like snot, which makes this a popular thing to do in seventh grade. Oh, yeah, because you have like the fabulous gross out factor. Ew, it's yeah. boogery. Yeah. Yeah, and it is kind of. But then does it feel slimy? It does not feel slimy at all. It almost feels like salt and water hanging there. Huh. Okay, I'm going to go for another dip. And so, if you wanted to do this at home, you could absolutely positively try other fruits and vegetables that you had. Uh-huh. Ooh, there's a good trip. And like Miss, yeah. ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. Ooh. Like okay. Miss Baker said, you could also use a blender. So if you had something that was, you know, strawberries are easy to squish uh -huh. it with your hand, but when yeah. I use split peas, I use the blender because they, I use the dried ones. Mm -hmm. So they're pretty hard. Yeah. And I soak them yeah. in water overnight. Well, that is amazing that these are the DNA strands from all those strawberry cells. Pretty And then amazing. how many DNA strands were per cell in the strawberry? I think of cells as being kind of like bricks in a wall almost. You know what? I don't know. That would be if we, when our, D, when our cells are getting ready to divide, our uh -huh. DNA will form into chromosomes. Uh -huh. I don't know how many chromosomes strawberries have. Right. So okay. viewers, it. Google it and send me an email. Okay. So the question is how, how many DNA strands are in four strawberries? Is that what we got? Oh, it's a lot. A lot, a lot. Okay, because got it. It, we'd have to calculate. We, that's a good math problem. I know. And I always love to see where the giant humongous numbers are hiding in something tiny. There's a lot of giant humongous numbers. I th yes. Our DNA, if we took it cell end to end f of from all our cells, uh -huh. they th based on the math, they yeah. think it would go to the sun and back 600 times from mm -hmm. one human. Wow. And that would be so molecularly thin you couldn't see it, but still. Correct. Yeah. That so, is amazing. So we have a lot of DNA. And, and this little string of, of goop DNA. is like the, the blueprint that makes strawberries into strawberries. So that is really amazing. I really love amazing. what we did today. It's so incredible. And well, gosh, okay, I'm going to go for one more dip here. Okay, and while she's Let's dipping, we there we go. Okay. <laughs> we're about to dip. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday, we'll be back. Yeah. And we will. We'll and it's be doing math. math. Day. Yes, and we're going to do some math patterns, and then um, Miss Psalm's eighth graders have donated amazing posters for us, and so um, it'll be my turn to talk about the math and Miss Hamango's job to zoom into the studio and figure out what the heck is going on. Can't wait. Oh yeah, we're going to write some equations in color coding. It's going to be amazing. And in the meantime, we have strawberry goop. Look at that. DNA. And I'll eat my Wheaties that day so I can do the math oh, after yeah. a long day of teaching. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs>